back to Africa 54. I'm Vincent McCory in Washington. Now, Muslims and Christians in a small town in South Niger have been worshipping in the same compound for more than 60 years. VOA Houses Service reporter Haruna Mamani Bako brings us a story of religious tolerance narrated by Mamudi Lalo. In a busy town on the Sahelian trade route cutting across southern Niger, Muslims and Christians have found a way to honor each other's religion. 98% of the people here in Bunnungwani are Muslims, but that hasn't stopped them from sharing their compound with Christians. Muslim Alaji Umaru Osi says the town takes pride in its inclusion. This is really interesting to have church and mosque on the same ground, side by side. People are worshipping their Lord in peace without conflict. Christian Adme Pelagi Marius says it is religious acceptance built on mutual respect. Sincerely, we Christian women who are here in Burnungwani, we're living peacefully. We have no major differences with our neighbors. Muslim Romana Tunuhu says her mosque sharing a compound with the church helps bring two communities together. Sometimes they invite us to their ceremonies, even though we have different understanding about religion. This cannot be the reason not to stay together. Mayo Munkail Soka says that togetherness shows his town's commitment to peaceful coexistence. There are no problems between Muslim and the Christian in Berlin and it is our desire to build on the peace and tranquility. That tranquility has been strained at times. During renovation in 2011, the church was damaged by some young Muslims who also stole some items. Local Imam Malam Muhammad Udam Wazifa says Muslim leaders quickly came to their neighbor's defense. It was a little misunderstanding among some youth that resulted in arrest. We could not tolerate that. This area is known for peace and harmony, and conflict has always been resolved through communication. This enables us to have a better understanding of each other. Bunungwani Christian Arzigaladan says it was a moment that showed everyone the strength of cooperation here. When the unrest began, I was optimistic because it was not being carried out by people who are well-informed Muslims. Local politicians and religious leaders have worked together to promote religious acceptance here. District official Ibrus Halifu Dangaladima says that makes Brunungwani an example for the nation. We are pleased with the level of peace here. Even if it's rare in Africa to have a church and a mosque within confined space, where people from both religions pray and live harmoniously. Following the 2011 incident, the church here was renamed Our Lady of Dialogue to reflect this town's commitment to religious tolerance. For Haruna Mumambakwe Mbunukwani, Mahmoud Lalo, VOA News. Farming communities in Adamoa State, northeast Nigeria, are getting some support to cushion the effect of herdsmen farmers' crisis. Under a humanitarian initiative, a non governmental organization is distributing livestock to at least 5,000 households to serve as an alternative source of income, especially for those who lost their farms or are afraid of returning for fear of attacks. Channel Television's correspondent, Freedom Haslon, compiled this report. Struggle for scarce resources such as land and water, as well as climate change, which is taking a toll on grazing parts, as some of the causes of conflict between farmers and herdsmen, not only in Nigeria, but also in some other countries in the Sahel region. Most affected communities in Nigeria are still living with the aftermath of violent clashes. Some farmers have been unable to return to their farms, and the livelihoods of many are at stake. With this in mind, a non-governmental organization is distributing livestock to households in the northeast to serve as a measure to end poverty. Adamawa State is one of the two pilot states where over 5,000 households are being given at least a male and a female goat. We're empowering the community to come out of poverty so that they can live more happily with each other. We, if, if, with the livestock, we're encouraging them to build pens. That is the kind of ranching, a very small 
scale of ranching we are talking about. They have the, their pains, their animal pains in the communities, even though they are farmers. They are still keeping animals and they are doing it, they will do it well because we have encouraged them to build their pens, keep their animals and how they can feed them using local materials. And this will improve peace in the communities. Many of the beneficiaries are those who lost their farms to enable them rear goats and reap the dividend. Thereof, while others who didn't can rear the animals alongside their crops. We thank God for this intervention. We will rear these animals and when they reproduce, we will give to other families in need. By bringing the, co the community together with the, the, with the government, I think this problem of harassment and uh, farmers clashes will be resolved. The community leader also applauds the initiative and gives a word of advice to the beneficiaries. We are one of the beneficiaries which we cannot ever forget because it will enable us to our people to, to move forward and to progress in livestock and other things. The distribution of livestock is also being carried out in Taraba State and will eventually reach other states in the northeast. It aims to serve as a stopgap measure against the socio-economic impact of the crisis on the communities. It's time now for a short break. As we do go, we remind you to visit our website, channelstv.com, for news and other programming around the clock. You can also find us on youtube.com forward slash channels rep. Still to come on the program, Senegal Super Suit, the fruit of the baobab tree, has gained worldwide popularity. But are increased sales sustainable? That story after the break.